Well, hi, and welcome back to my wet, miserable office this morning. But hopefully it'll improve as the day goes on. Today's subject, DxO versus Canon's Digital Professional. Now, DxO, the version that I've chosen of this software, is noise reduction only. And the Canon's Digital Professional is meant really for uh, editing your raw images. So change the white balance, uh, picture style, bit of sharpening, a little bit of brightness, some other things. Everything that the camera does internally when you're shooting in raw, you can readjust later on if you find it doesn't work all that well. Uh, now in the past it never had noise reduction. When I bought the 7D Mark II, they added noise reduction which is good as long as there wasn't too much noise. Get a little bit more excessive sort of noise in the background using higher ISOs. Then my subject, the Agile Antichinus, its fur would start to have a pencil look about it. Look a little bit odd, making it mostly unusable when it's you know, a stronger noise reduction. Uh, but the background would always look fantastic. Now that I've bought this, the R6, that's changed with the new update for the R6 in Digital Professional. The noise reduction is a hell of a lot better. Ten times better. Maybe even more. But once we get to real high ISOs, the fur on the Agile, where it starts to go out of focus, so you know we don't have a lot of depth of field with a uh, zoom lens. And so the head would look all right, and as it the focus drops off towards its rump, then we'd get a slight touch of that pencil -y look. It's still there, it's okay, but I'd rather it not be there. All right, so I think what we'll do now is we'll head into the studio and compare images and give you my thoughts on both of them. Well, here we are in my studio. Now, the reason why I'm making this video is because a few weeks ago, there was two bird photographers that live in the state that I'm in, in Australia, Victoria, and they were talking about the difference between DxO and Topaz with noise reduction. I was hoping they were going to mention Canon's Digital Professional, but they didn't, and I know one of them uses it. So it intrigued me. I wanted to know the difference between the two. That's why. Now, so I downloaded this free trial, 30 day free trial. All right, now I'm going to show you some images that are perfect. They don't need any work as far as uh, noise reduction or anything like that. Just a, some, a little bit of work in Photoshop to uh, make them a little closer to me, cut out some of the background. Pretty much it. But there's something here we, I really have to show you so you can make a good decision yourself whether you want to use a D, DxO or not. This is the original RAW file. But next is the DxO file. All right, can you see the difference between the two? There is a yellow cast from the DxO. I'm not sure why this is but it's definitely not me the way i'm doing things it's the program it's changed the color so there's a lot of green in the background or you know a lot of green in the image you'll notice it straight away being a, having a yellow cast on it all right so this is a processed image uh through uh canon's digital professional let me call it Digital Pro, <laughs> shorten things. So Digital Pro, I've done some work in there and then moved it on to Photoshop and did a little bit of editing with some distractions. And um, I also did a slight touch of color grading. Everything I've done on this one, I've pretty well much transferred it over onto the DxO version, bring it through Camera Raw and then into Photoshop. So let's see the difference between the two. There is still a yellow cast there. I tried my best 
uh, without taking hours to try and work out a way of making it a bit deeper green. Um, yeah, so I think this is going to take quite some time to master and make it a lot better than that. But anyway, I thought this is really important to show you the differences between the two. Right, so now I have some others. So I have a spotted part of light. Here's the original. And here is the touched up version in Digital Pro. And next we go to DxO. All right, did you see any noticeable difference in the orange on the base of the tail? All right, very important. Look carefully, this is a female. See how bright the orange is on the tail. There's hardly any orange there, it's all yellow. I have some more examples here with the male. Digital Pro one, uh, it's edited. And this is a DxO. So the yellows have been enhanced dramatically. I have, again, a process is exactly the same. So it's definitely <laughs> something to consider here. I've got some swallows here, uh, the red on the face. Now this wasn't done in perfect lighting conditions, it was overcast and the light, the sun is actually on the opposite side of the bird. So I had to do a fair bit of work to um, bring back the detail and everything on this side. So this is the Digital Pro and here is the EXO version. So you can see the difference in the red on the face. It's definitely different. I tried to get it the same, it just wouldn't come out. But again, this might be a bit of a learning curve. Uh, and I have another example here as well. So now, let's go back and get into some real work with uh, noise in the background. Right, so my first one, again, this is um, unedited with the Digital Pro. Let's move on to DxO version. On its rump, so the back area of its, its legs now, it's starting, starting to go out of focus because um, Zoom lens, shallow depth of field. So it's getting a little washed out with the fur. The detail is getting a little washed out. But the background's looking beautiful. There's no noise there anymore. Uh, this was shot at uh, ISO 2500. Yeah. With that type of lighting with the uh, R6, we, we don't get a lot of noise. But there was some there, and it's done an awesome job in the background. But it, it hasn't dealt with the fur very well. So it's not that pixely, sort of uh, pencily look that I've talked about. It's um, soft and lacks detail. But we go back to the DxO version. We can see more detail in that fur. The noise reduction, yeah, they're, they're pretty much the same. You can't really see any proper, uh, uh, you know, differences at this sort of uh, low level noise reduction. Here's uh, processed up close so you can see a little better with the Digital Pro and then the version of the DxO. You can see because I've brought it closer, it's a lot better with the detail. This is high ISOs where we're going to look at more about the background than anything. Uh, so first off, unprocessed straight out of camera, digital professional, next one, DxO. So you can see the fur's a grey, washed out colour. DxO have brought a little bit more detail to it. But I think if we look at the digital professional version, and we look right into the background, we'll zoom in a fair bit, and you can see it's a little sandy and grainy looking on that grass. If we go to the DxO version, that is smoothed out in the background. It looks a lot better 
we could print it to a reasonable size. Uh, but yeah, a lot of work needs to be done on that fur to get it back to its original color. I don't know whether you could. Now this is where I've used a flash and uh, I took a shot, went to take another one as it did a beautiful pose <laughs> and the flash didn't fire, it hadn't recycled quick enough. I'd say this image is pretty dark but there's some detail there. So it should come up reasonably well you would think. So here's a, a little bit of processing in Digital Pro. A lot of sandy grain in the background because it's pretty heavy with noise. So it hasn't done a very good job. There's a lack of detail in the fur, so it's something you would delete normally, but for some reason I've kept these. And I'm glad I did, actually. All right, so let's go to the DxO. This is where this product shines for me and could be useful in some of the images that I've kept and for any in the future. It's looking pretty good, but it's still on its feet and around the place if you look, there's a little bit of uh, weirdness going on with uh, over sharpening, trying to get some detail out of something where there's not a lot of detail. But if we change this to black and white, that is a printable image. Don't print it too big. I think this is the way to work with really high noise reduction images. Yeah, because of the color and maybe some too much over sharpening, it's going to work better uh, doing it with black and white. All right, there's another one. This is one I was really unhappy. I've been waiting for this Agile coming down and hopefully to jump and I'll catch it uh, midair or something like that. But it was just about to jump and I pulled the trigger a bit quick. Uh, the flash didn't fire for some reason. I ended up with a shot there. You could see there's some detail there, not a lot. Let's go on to what it looks like with uh, Digital Pro. It's a delete file. The same again, washed out fur, lack of detail, looks bloody horrible. But <laughs> we're going to DxO, it's looking really good. There's a little bit of over sharpening happening on the feet because they're out of focus anyway with depth of field. But the rest of it's looking really good. This is an, another one that's a usable image. There's some distractions in the background but they're certainly very clean looking with the noise. Again, black and white brings it to life. That is a much better looking image in black and white. All right, I've got another one here. This is uh, a moment that I put a little bit of honey on the end of a stick and I wanted this sort of pose. I took a shot as it was coming up and it wasn't a great pose. Then I took another quick shot and the, yeah, hadn't recharged quick enough and didn't fire. You can see it's not going to work once we start working on it, brightening it up and everything. But anyway, here is the digital pro version. Again, washed out for lack of detail, background grainy and horrible. Go to the DxO version. Details back in the fur, a little bit too much over sharpening on some parts of it. Background looks stunning, beautiful, and the foreground as well. The log actually has a lot of detail to it that's fine. It looks natural and normal. Black and white brings it back to life. That is the difference between Digital Professional and DxO. So how I'm going to work with these two is, I'll be normally uh, processing in Digital Professional, but when there's excessive noise, I'm going to bring it over to DxO to make it a hell of a lot better image. When we need even heavier noise reduction, like the flash hasn't gone off, um, yeah, DxO will be my go-to. So they'll work side by side as we move into the future <laughs> 
get a good, good, fantastic pose that I'd be pissed off that I've missed out on because the flash didn't go off, didn't recycle quick enough. Um, I could save it. Black and white would be the obvious go. Normally, exposure's perfect, no noise. I'll be using Digital Professional. It's just quicker and easier. Now, after my 30-day trial ran out, I am the nerd. Do I really need this? And I had a look at all the images I've had in the past from the 7D Mark II and the 5D Mark II. There's a lot of things I would like to redo. So I end up buying DxO. Uh, it was on special. That was probably the reason it got me over the line. It's about 80 something dollars at the minute. Normal price is 130 and I thought, oh, a bit more than I would want to pay. But because it was on special, we went ahead and did it. Now at the minute, I'm going into trying to be a partner with them so that uh, you know, if you decide you'd like to have the DxO and you go through my link, hopefully if I can get this through quick enough before this video goes out, um, yeah, they'll give me a couple of bucks and hopefully you get a discount and you save some bucks, but it'll help both of us out. So going into a, a partnership with them, uh, hopefully that all works out. So it may or may not be a link <laughs> when this video comes out, but go and check it out anyway in, down in the description part of this video. Uh, and click on it and go and check it out for yourself. Go for the 30-day trial and then buy it. And then we'll both win out. All right, waffling on far too much. Hope you enjoyed this, got something out of it. And if you want to subscribe to my channel, click on my pretty little face just down there in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Hit the little bell, you'll get notification whenever I do anything else. And if you want to go and have a look at all the other mad and crazy things I've been doing in the past, click on my icon right here, it'll take you to my channel. There's over 200 videos there to choose from. I talk about photographing and filming in the forest environment, using a flash in the forest environment. Uh, talk about camera gear. And when I go on adventures, I take you with me. So go and have a browse, there'll be something there of interest to you, I am sure. Now just remember, if you don't do, you don't get. So get out there and start photographing, filming wildlife. I'll catch you on the next one. And if you, uh, hit that like button, that would be awesome. I'd really appreciate giving me the thumbs up. Bye.